Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Crash and I just finished watching Squid Game and it was pretty great, I have to say it lived up to the hype, though I am pretty biased. You see Squid Game is part of a genre called Death Game, a genre that I've been in love since I've watched Saw 2 and Cube back in my early teens. And once I got into manga I found out that this is a genre that is pretty common within the medium. So it's actually not too much of a surprise to me to find out that Squid Game's writer and director Wang dong Yuk actually used to read a lot of manga. It's why a lot of people claim that Squid Game feels like an anime, because it definitely pulls a lot from the genre. Today we'll be talking about three manga that we know have inspired Squid Game and two that we are not sure of but has been directly or indirectly associated with the series. And let's start with the one that everyone is comparing to Squid Game, Kaiji, the ultimate survivor. And while Kaiji is not really that game, there is a lot to compare. The basic message of Kaiji and Squid Game are kind of the same, as we see people risk everything for money. Kaiji sees a group of debt collectors tracking down people in gigantic debts and offer them a way out via intense gambling games that can either clear you out of your debts or put you in way bigger problems. While there are moments of people betting their own lives, the biggest difference in Kaiji is that most of the games aren't really about death and more so about the risk of getting into unpayable debts that will ruin your life forever. Having that in mind, Kaiji is still as intense, if not more, as Squid Game, as the characters use every last resource to try to come out on top. Though, I think the biggest similarity between these two series happens in the fifth game of Squid Game and the second game of Kaiji. While they are not the exact game, the fact that both of them include people wearing numbered shirts, trying to cross metal beams on a high altitude, in a game that makes people push each other to move forward, and the last one has the advantage, and all the while a bunch of rich people watch and laugh, make it Hearly similar in terms of vibe, but the reason to watch Kaiji is not really the second game, it's the tension. Generally, in that game, you can sort of expect for at least the main character to survive until the last game. Sure, the character can die at the last panel, but they'll win every game up to that point. Kaiji doesn't need to win every time, as a matter of fact, he doesn't. Even when the bets are at the maximum, Kaiji can still lose. So this manga is mostly Kaiji coming up with plans to turn the odds on to his favor. But the thing is, none of them are really 100% certain to work. Some of them can only succeed if a certain criteria is met and the chances of winning are pretty short, but it is his last resource. Others have almost 100% guarantee of working, with only a slim chance of failing. But since Kaiji doesn't always win, even when the odds are in favor of him, the manga keeps us at the edge of our seats as we beg for the opponent to not draw the right card or make the right call. If you want the manga to keep you immersed and screaming at the characters, sigh of relief when things go well and despair when things don't, then Kaiji is perfect and one manga I most definitely recommend. If you've read Kaiji and you're looking for something similar, then the second manga in this list may fill your needs. Lighter Game has also been mentioned as an inspiration to Squid Game and I'm gonna be honest, I've only read the first two volumes of it and so far the similarities between Liar Game and Squid Game are the same as between Kaiji and Squid Game because Liar Game feels very much like just a Kaiji. Well, kinda. In Liar Game, they entice people into games where they can get a decent amount of money, just to then reveal that if they lose or quit the game, they will be in debt. So, similar to Kaiji, it's not really a game of death, but more so a game of finding themselves free of debts, and with some luck, they'll win some cash. Now, to be fair, it's not really as much of a gambling game, as at least the first two were not. They are more focused in mind games, and I think the main characters also deliver a completely different feel to it. Or to be more specific, Shinichi, who is a con artist that got dragged into the game and uses his smarts to win the games. Now, the way that Shinichi is presented is what makes Liar Game Liar Game and not Kaiji the ripoff. See, Kaiji comes up with his plans in the moment, as he fights to stay in the games. They come out of desperation. Shinichi, on the other hand, tends to be more like Light from Death Note. It feels like he's the superior guy from the get-go and that he's always, always on top. The cool moments are when he explains how he tricked everyone and how he planned it in a way where his win would almost or completely be guaranteed. If you like Squid Game or Kaiji, and you like Death Note, or in specific the way that Light and L come up with mind games against each other and the way that they deliver and explain it, then Liar Game is for you. But if you're like, yeah, okay, Crash, but what we really like about Squid Game is how deadly the games are. We want death. I hear you, and I have two words for you. Battle Royale. Yes, the video game genre that has been conquering the multiplayer world is actually named and influenced by a novel of the same name, released in 1999. They are essentially the same rules as shown in the series. Battle Royale was then very popularly adapted into a live-action movie and a manga in the following year. And while the movie is brutal and very controversial in nature, the manga goes a little bit deeper. The story puts an high school class in a stranded island as part of The Program, a TV show made by the government that consists of forcing these students to kill each other until one of them survives. 
Battle Royale is probably the most remarkable and influential manga in this list. I mean, it clearly has inspired the most mainstream franchise in the genre, the younger games. The series was important enough that the subgenre is literally named after it and again, 20 years later, we're seeing its influence in video games, with PUBG and Fortnite being essentially just video game versions of this series. The movie in particular has been mentioned a decent amount of times in American cinema and is even one of Quentin Tarantino's favorite movies. It's hard to think then that Squid Game wasn't influenced by it, even if just indirectly. And of course, the director also mentioned reading Battle Royale. Now, if you think Squid Game was brutal and gory, you're not ready for Battle Royale. Because if there is a thing that this manga excels at, it's presenting gore. The art style is great whenever someone's losing their head. The other thing that really does well is spending the first four or so chapters kind of setting up the game and its villain, and there have been very few villains that I just wanted to murder as much as I did this guy right here. The actual game is as simple as they come. You won't find anything as interesting as Squid Game in that department, so making me have a reason to be invested right away, in this case wanting to see someone shoot that guy, is a good way to keep me engaged. And the true shining point of Battle Royale is shown later. One of my favorite things in Squid Game is the cast of characters. They spend a lot of time exploring them, and that leads to pretty cool payoffs in the later half of the series, as we see how these characters' relationships and personalities decide their outcomes in the final games. Battle Royale's strongest point is also the characters and their relations. The manga tries to show the personality of almost every one of the 42 students of the class, and with that in mind, it's interesting to see who they team up with and who they don't, and how they react to only being in the game. While some refuse, others try to collaborate, others go mad, and others just go peacefully with it. It's that diversity in the cast that I really like. Now, I don't think any of the characters in particular is better than the cast of Squid Game, but with the amount of characters in Battle Royale, there's bound to be a couple you're drawn into. And I just want to give another warning though. This manga isn't just brutally gory at times, it's also very, very sexual and very explicit in that regard, so do have that in mind. Don't read this in front of your family. I learned that the hard way as the sex scene just started happening while I was casually reading it beside my girlfriend. Yeah. Those are the ones that we know that Wang Dong Yu has read, but there's two more that I want to talk about that probably didn't influence the series, but that people still make an association with Squid Game, and I just love them a lot to just not mention them, and I think people should read them more. The first one is called Kamisama, no Yutori or As God's Will, and Squid Game has been accused of ripping off the movie adaptation of the series, which came out in 2018. Now, there are a lot of similarities between this manga and Squid Game, as both of them force the players to play deadly versions of children games, starting with Red Light, Green Light. And I feel like the fact that both of them start with the exact same game is the main reason why people say it's a ripoff. Although, that seems unlikely, because allegedly the first draft of Squid Game was finished in 2009, before the manga and way before the movie of As God's Will was even released. But the truth is, they're not that similar, because Kamisama no Yutori just far more insane. From the mind that came up with Jagan and Blue Lock, Kamisama no Yutori's best features are how brutally insane everything is, and that is especially true once we reach part 2. Contrary to Squid Game in pretty much all the other manga in this list, Kamisama no Yutori decides to not be grounded in reality at all. The gods are creating magical games where anything is possible, and that makes the games very visually interesting, with giant cats and people floating in the air, and explosions of blood aplenty. If you like Squid Game because of the games and how deadly they could be, this one is one I have on the top of my list in the genre. Everything is just fun and insane. The other thing that I really love about this manga is just that you can't tell who's going to live or not, which is a big deal to me when it comes to dead games or horror in general. After a while, you start to figure out who's more likely to die early and who's more likely to continue, either because of their characters, build up, or personal story arc. But Kamisama no Yutori knows your assumptions and throws them out of the window. That side character that looks like Canon Father is going to survive for half the manga and slowly become more and more important. The one guy who just got introduced and showed his entire backstory is going to die in three chapters. It's really impossible tell who's going to win the games and that makes you on your toes for the entirety of the manga. Now again, part 2, which is the longest part, is indeed the highlight of the series, but part 1 is also worth the read. As for the final manga on this list, it's another one that probably didn't influence Squid Game, but it's one that is brought into relevancy again, or at the very least its Netflix adaptation has. Harless in Borderland is yet another dead game, and I think it might just be the best one. The characters on this one are Great. And there's some emotional scenes because of it, but more so than that, the games are just incredibly varied. This takes the same approach as Kamisama in the sense that it's also supernatural, and while the games aren't as insane as in there, there's just a lot of diversity among them. From cooperative games, to mind games, to full-on slaughters, there's a bit of everything here. 
making sure that you never feel tired or bored while reading the manga. Another thing that I think Alice in Borderland does really well that others in genre, including Squid Game, tend to fail is making us really invested into why is this happening. Sure, Squid Game does this decently well, but never throughout the series I really felt like I cared about knowing exactly what's behind the mask, especially because it was kind of obvious. But the old police storyline could have been scrapped and I don't think that would change too much. But it does a better job than most manga the genre, because most of them tend to not really care about that part at all. Now it's in Borderlands, however, one of the main focuses is indeed how they got into Borderlands, now they can get out. It's a big mystery, and the manga will keep you invested in theorizing with the characters as to what to do and what the characters they have mean. If you like Squid Game, you may want to give Alice in Borderlands Netflix that they should go, as it really is a faithful and fantastic adaptation. But if you want the full story, you will need to check the manga. If you already have and liked it, I can recommend the rest of the series enough. The sequel we try is great, and the spin-off Alice in Borderlands brings a Battle Royale-esque flavor to the whole thing, as 12 characters are dropped into the game without any idea of their next move. All of these five manga sequels and spin-offs, so it has enough material to keep you occupied until you wait for the second season to drop. But if this is somehow not enough, there is a lot to check out in the genre, and I haven't read it all yet. But Gans, Mirai Nikki, Toriku no Tsuga, and the Sama game are just some of the manga that you can read while you wait. If you want more manga recommendations, there is a playlist on the left you can click on, and there's always a subscribe button for any future lists. And if you watch this still here, thank you very much, and I'll see you next video.